Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll explain how I mix up my hydroponic nutrients for fruiting plants such as tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers. And my results are usually very good. I don't get blossom end rot and generally my plants produce an abundance of fruit. I should say that I'm still not happy with the taste of the bell peppers I've grown hydroponically but the tomatoes and cucumbers taste great. That said, I still think the outdoor garden produces better tasting fruits and vegetables. That's just my opinion, but since I can't grow out there for a good portion of the year, then indoor hydroponics is the next best thing. Currently, my personal go-to hydroponic nutrient solutions are Master Blend for fruiting plants and Grow Big from Fox Farms for leafy greens and herbs. And of course, plenty of Folgers coffee for me. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Master Blend, Grow Big, or Folgers. It's just what I like to use. The Grow Big is much easier to mix up. You just mix two teaspoons into a gallon of water and shake. That's it. The Master Blend is a three-part formula that needs to be mixed separately, so it takes a little more effort, but it's really inexpensive since a bag lasts a really long time. Back to the Master Blend formula. It's a 4 18 formula straight out of the bag. The three numbers correspond to nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These are called macronutrients, and they're important in the overall health of the plant. I'll get to the micronutrients in a moment, but first a little more about NPK. The N stands for nitrogen, and this is important at the beginning stages of plant's development. Speaking of plant growth stages, most people think of the growing cycle in three stages, growth, flowering, and fruiting. For leafy greens, we eat the leaf part, and when the plant gets to the flowering stage, the leafy parts usually taste bitter, and we say that the plant has gone to seed. The next letter in NPK is P, that stands for phosphorus. Phosphorus is really important for developing flowers and fruit, so if you see your tomato plants have lots of leaves and stems, but few flowers, then you probably want to add more phosphorus. The last letter K stands for potassium, and that helps with root development, which is super important, especially if you're growing root crops. Potassium is also helpful for plants to be able to resist disease better, and it also helps in the process of photosynthesis. The plant will also benefit from micronutrients, and you can see here that the Master Blend formula also contains magnesium, boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. My first hydroponic system was an AeroGarden, that's what got me started, and I used the AeroGarden liquid food that came with the system. You can see here the nutrients listed on the AeroGarden container, and they don't have as many nutrients as the Master Blend. Still, I get good tomatoes from the AeroGarden liquid fertilizer, so it would be an interesting experiment to do a side-by-side -side grow comparing the two nutrient solutions. Now that we know what NPK is, what are the numbers for 1838 stand for? Well, as I understand it, these are the ratios of each of the macronutrients. So the Master Blend formula is 4% nitrogen, 18% phosphorus, and 38% potassium. That adds up to 60%, so the other 40% are the micronutrients and probably filler materials. So if Master Blend only has 4% nitrogen, then of course we need to add more, especially at the beginning growing stage of the plant, right? That's why Master Blend is mixed as a three-part formula, the Master Blend, and then the calcium nitrate, and magnesium sulfate. The calcium nitrate is CaNO3, and it's labeled as 15.500, so that should, in theory, make up for the low 4 in the Master Blend formula. The last part of the three-part formula is magnesium sulfate, that's MgSO4, otherwise known as Epsom salt. So to mix up the hydroponic solution correctly using the Master Blend formula, you need to add the three together, but not all at once. If you mix them all together, you may get lucky and they will mix up fine, but most likely the calcium nitrate will not mix with the Epsom salt, and you'll end up with undissolved solids at the bottom of your reservoir. I've seen people on YouTube just throw the ingredients in all together, but when I tried that, I had some of it undissolved. After doing a little research and experimenting on my own, I found that by mixing up the calcium nitrate last, I have no trouble with it dissolving. Here's how I mix up my Master Blend. 
The recipe for 5 gallons of water calls for 12 grams of Master Blend, 6 grams of Magnesium Sulfate, and 12 grams of Calcium Nitrate. I mix up my nutrients in smaller quantities. I use one gallon milk jug containers. They're much easier for me to carry around and work with. So I needed to adjust this recipe proportionately by dividing the five gallon recipe numbers by five. So 12 grams divided by five gives me 2.4 grams and six grams divided by five gives me 1.2 grams. The result for a one gallon recipe is as follows. 2.4 grams of Master Blend, 1.2 grams of magnesium sulfate, and 2.4 grams of calcium nitrate. If you want the measurements by volume rather than weight, it's not as accurate, but it's about a half teaspoon for the master blend and calcium nitrate, and a quarter teaspoon of Epsom salt per gallon of water. Now here's the fun part, mixing it all up. I start with filtered water from my reverse osmosis system. My tap water is mixed with salt because we have very hard water otherwise, so I need to use filtered water. You can see the salt residue on my clay pebbles when I cheat and use tap water. So I fill up four jugs with filtered water and then I start with the master blend. I weigh it and since my scale is not accurate to the decimal, I weigh two grams and then I add a dash more to get it to 2.4 and if the scale gets to 3 grams, I take a little bit off. It's not exact, but I do the same when I bake cakes and they come out just fine. I know some people like to be very exact with measurements when baking or mixing for hydroponics, but I guess I'm pretty good at guesstimating, and I think the plants and my cakes can take it if I'm a couple of micrograms off. If this concerns you and you want to be super exact, then make sure you get a scale that measures in grams with decimal places. Mine doesn't. It jumps from two to three and doesn't show the decimals in between. I add the master blend to each gallon of water and shake. Next, I measure out the magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. This calls for half the amount of the master blend, so 1.2 grams or a quarter teaspoon. And then I pour the granules into each gallon of water and shake again. Last, and always last, comes the calcium nitrate. This is the same amount as the master blend, 2.4 grams or a half a teaspoon. I pour this into each gallon jug and shake. You can see there are no granules or sediment. Everything mixes up perfectly. If you don't mix in this order, then the nutrients may not mix up properly, and you'll get what some people refer to as nutrient lockout, which means that not all nutrients will be available for the plants to use. For this reason, I don't buy master blend kits that are put together and sold as premixed. These may not mix up properly and are likely fake brand knockoffs and not the authentic master blend. It is a little bit of a hassle to mix up the three ingredients and that's why I make a couple of gallons at a time and there are easier formulas you can buy but it gets expensive to buy those. The master blend in the long run is much less expensive because a bag goes a long way. You only use about a half a teaspoon at a time and there are a lot of half teaspoons in a one pound bag. Actually there are 184 half teaspoons in a pound. So you really get your money's worth with the Master Blend formula. I think that's why it's so popular, that and of course because it works. I hope that helps explain a little about the Master Blend hydroponic formula and how I mix it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye!